Well, for 13 years, Larry Bird thrilled Celtic fans with his style of play. He came to a last place team and propelled them to three world championships and gave us memories that we will never forget. And tomorrow night at the Garden, the Celtics, their fans, will have a chance to say thank you in a two-hour ceremony. The night will end with Larry's number 33 hanging from the Garden rafters with other Celtic greats. Tonight, Bob Newmeyer has the first of a two-part look at Larry's career. Larry Bird is one of the greatest players that ever played the game. I love his competitive nature. It's just so many memories, and uh, for his physical talent, he's probably the best player ever played the game. Bird has the ball in three-point land. It's off! A three-point field off of Larry Bird! For a period of seven, eight years there, I felt that I, I was one of the best. I always had uh, great respect for Magic. I always thought he was on the same level or a little bit better, but when I was in control of a basketball game, there's no, not a better feeling to me. To sum up the career of Larry Bird, we simply go to the dictionary. For this is a story about testimony, where friends and foes of Bird will speak on themes they have chosen to describe his pro basketball career. His desire and his competitiveness, I mean, I think whatever talent you know, that he brought to the table, to me, was academic. He had the skills, he had the talent, uh, but he was just an unbelievable competitor. The main event was Larry Bird getting back into the game. After hitting the deck hard late in the second quarter, Bird went immediately to the locker room while rumors of a fractured cheekbone raced around the garden. Well, they were pumped up. I wasn't going to let him down. I was coming back. And here comes... I would say probably one of the uh, funniest stories uh, that, I, that I remember about Larry. I remember we were playing in uh, Hartford, Connecticut. I remember Benson was guarding uh, Larry Bird. It was like three seconds to go in the game, and Benson had Bird. And, uh, you know, he caught it in. He, he, he came out of the huddle, and everybody knew he was going to get the basketball. Uh, so he got it, pump fake, drove left, dropped it. Say, how could you put Benson on me? <laughs> My memories about that night was he would make the most amazing shots. Shots a lot of guys wouldn't even take. He's probably the greatest small forward he and uh, Julius I've ever played against in my career. I mean, he's a guy who refused to be beat and refused to give up. I mean, that's the seventh game series we played here one year in the playoffs. I mean, I've never played in a game like that. That's how he drove himself to be the player that he was. Uh, just uh, his determination, uh, whatever it was that caused him to be like that. Uh, you know, he's probably the most determined, most driven person I've ever been around. I mean, he totally blocked everything out except basketball. I think the greatest Larry Bird story uh, for me was when uh, we're getting ready to play New Jersey. We're on the road and Casey Jones is in there giving us a pretty serious pregame talk. And I look down and see Larry tying Casey's shoestrings together underneath the table. Casey takes his first step and, and uh, stumbles, and uh, everybody got a good laugh out of that. And I don't think anybody heard a word Casey said, but uh, that was Larry. I had fun playing. I tried to play a level where nobody else could play at. I did it for a few years. I'm just knowing that I played against some of the best basketball players in the world, and I did pretty fair against them. Oh Williams to Bird again. Up face. Fires another three-pointer. Oh! Right up there next to that 86 World Championship banner and the other set of retired numbers will hang the banner that'll have Larry Bird's number 33 on it. That banner will also have Kevin McHale's and Robert Parrish's number. They, of course, were the big three. McHale and Parrish know they've played their entire career in the shadow of Larry Bird. It has not been a problem for them. Rather, it's been a privilege. And this was Larry's team, and we didn't have any qualms about that. He was the best player. Uh, but also that he wouldn't, we all knew and he knew that he wouldn't be able to do a lot of things he was doing without us. Not many uh, athletes, uh, should I say personalities, uh, get a chance to have the luxury of being legendary while you're still playing. And uh, so that's just a compliment to, to Larry, uh, athletic abilities 
and uh, I'm just very proud to be a part of it. And as far as being overshadowed, uh, that's why I'd rather be in the background. So I'm glad to have someone like Larry and then also Kevin and uh, Dennis Johnson, Danny Ainge, and all those players around me. So I can stay in the background where I'd rather be. Fate brought the three of them together, and yet all would have been great without the others. I think all of us would have been successful by ourselves, but I don't think we would have been as successful uh, as we were collectively. Um, we, we were three distinct different personalities on and off the court, which probably is why we made it so long and uh, really worked well together on the court. And that was the big thing. People, were always, people always wanted to make us into something more than we were as far as socially and um, our friendship goes and stuff. We, have a, we all, Robert and I and Larry, all have a great deal of respect for each other, like each other a lot, but we're three different people who go three different ways off the court and, th and play three different games on the court, and that's why it was successful. The most important thing to me was this, this is the closeness that we had off the court. I think he and Kevin and I had, had a very special uh, friendship and relationship off the court, and that just carried over on the court. Tomorrow night's ceremony will be elaborate, to say the least, as well as unique. Both McHale and Parrish know they're not going to have anything like this when they retire. I don't think I would be as elaborate as Larry. <laughs> There'd be very few pointers we could take. <laughs> I told Rob we'll probably get 20, between 20 second time out. They'll probably say, you know, hey, Robert and uh, Kevin come out here, and this is Kevin's family, Lenny and some kids. <laughs> all right, all right. The game will keep, game will, game will proceed. <laughs> Well, it'll be quite a uh, ceremony tomorrow night. Of course, the uh, place is banged out. Tickets are impossible to get. This is the uh, souvenir booklet that'll be available for those here tomorrow night. And the uh, price is $7.95. All the proceeds going to the Sports Museum of Boston. Elizabeth, I couldn't get you in, but I'm giving you the book. And I'll so, probably you know, have to pay you $10 <laughs> for the book. No, well, this is very nice. I know and it I is. And I know you were trying to get me in. How's Larry Bird handling all of this uh, attention? He seems so low profile. You know, I think it's, uh, I think this is something that he wanted to do for the fans. This is not a comfortable night for him, uh, but he knew, since there's no personal gain for him at all whatsoever, this is something that he wanted to do for the fans and give them their chance. He knew that they wanted to thank him, and he wants to thank them at the same time. Well, that's great. It'll be a wonderful night, and after 12 years of begging you for tickets, thank you, Bob. Happy reading. The closest time. I'll ever get. Thank Will you. Will you tear it in two? <laughs> <laughs> Sharesies? All right, thank you, Robert. Coming up.